Neil from Essex here today with part two of our Tractor's Buyer Guide series. Today we're going to discuss the tractor itself and some of the configuration options you might want to consider if you're buying a new one. We're going to spend some time today diving into things like the engine and whether you need a high horsepower model or not. Maybe some options for the transmission and the different driving dynamics of your tractor or even cabs. If you join us here today, we're going to do a little bit of talking. Hopefully you can come away with a little bit more informed decision about the machine that you may want to buy. The product lines of most tractor companies can be frustratingly complex. There is a seemingly unnecessary variety and amount of models that are offered. Now, when you're in our shoes, you can dial in and understand that there is a point for every one of these options, but it is really overwhelming when you first start shopping just to see just how many tractors are out there. You can start to reduce that number quite a lot by recognizing that a company is going to build a given size frame and then create potentially several models on that frame by swapping out things in the engine and transmission. Now starting here with an engine, this machine right here, this Kubota L2501, is a 25 horsepower tractor, but it's also sold in a 33 and a 39 horse variant all sitting on exactly the same frame. The BXs behind me here are the same way. These are sold in a 18, 23, or 26 horse model. Even a 23S is gonna come through the factory backhoe on it, but all of them share the same underlying tractor, right? It's just swapping out of that engine in order to create different models. Now, all of us are kind of tuned to want as much horsepower as possible, right? But you wanna start with your tractor by recognizing that horsepower isn't always the part of the machine that's responsible for all of the work. If you look at your tractor, you've got a PTO shaft coming out the back. That is directly coupled to the engine. Every one of those horses down here under the hood is going to flow out the back of the machine and be available to run your implements. But if you're buying a tractor to do more loader work or your hydraulics are doing the work, every one of those engine options is turning the same hydraulic pump, in most cases at the same speed and at the same pressure. And it's that hydraulic pump that's doing the work to operate things like loaders and backhoes. So if you're buying a tractor for primarily loader backhoe work, buying a lot of horsepower may not do you a whole lot of good because the power of that tractor is the same in its hydraulic system regardless of the engine that you have. So understand that there are applications out there where we want that high engine horsepower for things like mowing and rototilling and that kind of thing, but also applications where it's just not necessary if you're running a loader and a backhoe. So we've talked about that a manufacturer can make several different models of a machine by varying the engines that are underneath the hood, but keeping the rest of the tractor quite the same. They often also will go through and build deluxe and basic variants of that tractor, again, on that same platform and often with that same engine. What makes a tractor deluxe versus kind of a more standard economy configuration is usually a lot of things that boil down to comfort and ease of use. It doesn't usually differentiate here as far as the tractor's capability goes. You're usually gonna be able to put the same power to the ground. You're gonna do the same kind of work with deluxe versus basic machines. But we've got a different level of comfort that's involved here. Now, where that comfort tends to come out is things like your seat. When you're sitting there in the seat, if you want, want, want one that's nice and plush, maybe can recline, it's got some armrests there to set your arms on, that seat can be significantly more expensive than just a basic old tractor seat. You're also going to notice things like filler panels. When you look underneath of that seat, if you look down to the ground and you see the dirt, that means that there's a lot less sheet metal and stuff underneath that seat, keeping things from like falling out of your pockets and stuff, right? Cost can be eliminated by taking those things out. The tractor is going to work just the same, but you'll see down to the ground. There's a lot of differences in deluxe or standard tractors here on the three-point hitch. When you go back up to an implement, things like 
extendable arms here to be able to reach out to that implement and wrap that arm around as opposed to having to kick the arm over top of a pin. Things like sway bars down here on the three-point hitch so that you're not using screwdrivers, turning turnbuckles, um, nice ratcheting things to change your, your leveling out. Um, a lot of things can be done here on the three-point to make implements easier to put on and off the machine um, and also a little bit easier to adjust for their operation. But those things do add cost and thus we have the models. So we've covered the tractor's engine. Now the tractor's transmission is equally as important in the way that you're going to use this machine and it's going to work. Under 60 horsepower, you're kind of considered to have a compact tractor at that point. You're gonna have one subset of transmission options. When you go over 60 horsepower into more of that utility-oriented machine, you're gonna have some different kinds of transmissions up there that are made for different kinds of tasks. Under 60 horsepower, you're gonna have generally a hydrostatic transmission option or a gear driven transmission option. Now we'll stick with the hydros here to begin with because by and large that is the most popular transmission that you'll find in these small tractors. If you don't already know what I'm talking about when it comes to gear drives, you probably want a hydro. It is in about 95% of these small tractors. Hydrostatic is going to be just like driving a big lawnmower. So you're going to have a range selector to choose an operating range range in most tractors a low medium high the smallest models are just going to have a higher low and then a pedal on the floor that you're going to operate and that pedal is going to be the harder you press the thing down the faster the tractor is going to travel now really deluxe machines like this grand l series kubota can have some electronic features in them to help you as the operator get as much out of this transmission as possible with features like stall guard or some additional range selections there's some cool stuff companies could do with the computers in the deluxe models uh, but you're going to find that that hydrostatic transmission being right for most people. If you're looking for a gear drive transmission, which is usually gonna be a little bit more economical, they're generally a little bit less expensive, a little bit more mechanically simple, right? Leading to some of that cost savings, and also the most efficient transmission when it comes to the amount of power that the transmission takes from the engine when it's running out the rear PTO, or the amount of power that's being put down to the ground and through the tires, there is no substitute for old school gears. Now it does take an experienced operator in order to get 100% of that power out of the tractor, but the gear drive is able to do that. You're gonna find differences in gear drive transmissions too. It's not real cut and dry, right? Just like the, the hydrostatic has the electronic versions or the mechanical versions, gear drive tractors have fully synchronized transmissions or unsynchronized ones where you need to stop the tractor in order to shift gears. So there's nice to drive and not so nice to drive variants out there but at least understand that the gear drives are going to be a little bit more of an operator right you're going to be a little bit more experienced on your tractor to get all that power out of the machine but they are an option that's out there if you like that kind of older school technology but if your eyes are starting to glaze over at this point it's the hydrostatic that you probably want if you're moving into this world of tractors over 60 horsepower, your transmission options look a lot different than they do on the smaller machines. Your most basic option is usually going to be a clutch and gears type setup. The better ones are gonna be synchronized and also often include a hydraulic shuttle so that you can change between forward and reverse without using the clutch, making loader work a lot easier. Once you move above that transmission option, your next one is gonna be a power shift. Power shift transmissions are going to have buttons that you're going to push through a set of ranges or through a set of gears and then a set of ranges that are going to stack on top of that to give you a lot of gears usually 16 to 24 maybe 32 gears and a power shift transmission what you want to look for there is the number of gears that are shifted by buttons without having to push the clutch pedal down to do that range change because it's not done under power the most deluxe transmission that's offered in these bigger utility machines now is a CVT type transmission. There's a lot of technology in those in order to put the power to the ground. It takes a little bit of understanding, but we see those become more and more popular all the time. Now, if you started with this at the beginning, the first video in this series was discussing what size tractor to start with and the different tasks that might drive you into a certain size machine. That was for a very good reason, right? Because it limits the amount of different variants that we're looking at, the different models that are out here. 
When we go through, we account for all the engine options for a size tractor and the transmission options for a size tractor. Just the standard L right here is sold in six different variants, right? And those six different variants start to make a lot more sense when you understand that it's just swapping out engines and transmissions in order to make all of those models. So hopefully this makes you feel a little bit less overwhelmed and helps you drill down to that one special tractor that you might be looking for. It wasn't that long ago that cabs were a bit of an anomaly on small tractors. I can remember years ago ordering aftermarket cabs to put onto machines where guys were wanting some kind of enclosure to keep themselves out of the weather. They were often canvas or cheap plastic that clouded over after time. But as time has gone by now, many of our manufacturers have recognized the desire for many people to have cabs on their tractors and they offer some really nice and refined factory options now. A cab is going to bring a couple of benefits to you. It most of the time is going to be heated for sure and in some cases air conditioned for hot climates. The, the glass is also going to shield you from things like bees nests or if you're like me and you have a horrible seasonal allergies keeps the pollen away from the machine. I mow with a cab on my zero turn mower and it makes a dramatic difference in the way that I feel when I go back inside after cutting the grass. So it's going to take care of some of those environments Environmentals for you make your machine a little bit more all season use if you live in the Northeast like we do it gives you a great option to stay warm when you're out taking care of the snow now cost for cabs is going to vary anywhere between about five to seven thousand dollars depending on the size of the machine a little bit of cost there one way or the other depending whether air conditioning is included or not and we do continue to have those more economy oriented options like we had in the past if you just want a cheap plastic enclosure something with canvas and stuff just to keep some of the weather off of you, those things continue to be available. But more and more companies now are coming with factory cabs fitted to them, making them really nice to use in all seasons. Your tire selection has huge implications for how your machine is going to perform. A more aggressive tire is going to put power to the ground better. It's going to make that tractor feel more capable, but it is going to be at the expense of turf damage. Uh, if you're working in fields, finding more aggressive tractive tires is usually only a good thing, but many of these tractors are used at a lot of different applications where other more hybrid tire options are desirable. On most machines, you're gonna have at minimum three tire options, a turf lawn tire, a hybrid industrial tire that usually is gonna be the most durable and have the heaviest sidewalls in it, and then a really tractive ag tractor tire. Many more machines now are starting to offer an R14 that's a little bit of a hybrid, a little bit more aggressive than an R4, but simultaneously a little bit more friendly to the turf. When we get up to those more utility-oriented machines, those tractors can have as many as a dozen different tire options, giving us options for width, and also differences between bias and radial tires. Radials can be run at lower ground pressures, getting more cleats of that ag tire down in the ground and making them more tractive. So a lot of things there to understand, but no, you know, the more aggressive tire, well, again, we go back to that engine horsepower thing, right? We want all the grunt in the world to get the work done but it's awfully frustrating when you transport your machine across a finished area and tear everything up, creating more work for yourself. So check out the different tire options that are available. They vary wildly by model. Depending on the implements that you choose to run with your tractor, you may need additional hydraulics installed on your machine. These can go on both the back of the tractor for operating your rear implements or out on your front loader with what's referred to as a third function kit. These are gonna be used in order to operate any number of cylinders or hydraulic motors that might be on the implements that you're running. People tend to overestimate the times that they're going to need and use these valves. Very frequently we sell tractors without them because they're usually dealer installed kits that can be put on after the fact and usually selected in order to power a specific implement that you're going to be buying. We have another video that covers all the different types of valves. These can be sold in floats and self cancelings and constant flows and there's a lot of different valve bodies that can be installed back here depending on that implement that you're going to be using. So if you're shopping for a tractor, know the implements that you want to use with your machine and then and order the valves that are needed in order to operate those implements. 
You will find that many dealership salesmen do not like to talk about weights on your tractor, but yet it can have a huge impact on how your machine performs. Tractors need weights for a number of different reasons. One of them is just to add to their overall base weight to make them a little bit more attractive, right? The more weight you've got on the ground, the more traction you're going to get but they're also needed for balance. If you're gonna be putting a loader or something on the front of your machine and lifting hundreds, if not thousands of pounds out in front of the tractor, you need some corresponding weight behind the machine in order to balance it out. Weights can come in a lot of different ways. There's several different options for fluids that can go into the tire or like this machine, ideally iron weights that sit here inside the rim. Why dealership people don't like to talk about this is it's an added expense that doesn't bring a whole lot of say performance value to you, right? It's an easily overlooked expense that you can kind of oftentimes get away with not including when you sell a machine to a person and keep that price a little bit lower. But it is worth looking at balance options on every tractor that you buy because it has significant implication for performance, safety, and stability. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit why these product lines can be so complex with so many different models and accessory kits and options. It can be really frustrating and really overwhelming quickly. We often see mistakes made when people do too much internet research. You can spend hours online digging through all of this stuff and as soon as you walk onto a dealership's lot, see that machine that you were looking at for the very first time, you may have gotten it entirely wrong, and we see that a lot. There is a role out here for people like us when it comes to buying equipment. We live this stuff every day. We've got a great group of people here at Messix that work on selling you the right machinery, you know, to meet the goals that you have and also a awesome parts and service department to back up the equipment once you've owned it over the long haul. Regardless of where you are and what you have, we are here to help with your parts and service needs. So if there's anything we can do for you here at Messix, give us a call. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com. And then narrow things down from there. <laughs> <laughs>